Hi, my name is Hannah Ledford and I'm an admissions counselor here at Bryan. Welcome to our Stoffel Visitor Center, where you are our visitors, but just from home. I'm really excited to be able to show you what life at Bryan College is like. We're gonna talk to some professors, some of our administrators, and hang out with some coaches to see a little bit more of what being a student would be like here. I'm really excited to take you on this journey, so come on down. I'm really excited to be able to jump into this by talking to our current provost, and really that's just a fancy word for our head of academics, but he's also our future president, effective July of 2020, Dr. Mann. Feel free to introduce yourself. I'd love for us to get to know you a little more. Well, Hannah, thanks for having me today. Uh, I came to Bryan just uh, not, not too long ago in 2018 in July uh, as the, the chief academic officer or provost, as you, as you indicated. I graduated from Bryan in 1992 and I met my wife here. And so it was a privilege to return back to Bryan after uh, a number of years teaching history as well as serving in various academic roles uh, at other institutions. Uh, I have two children here at the college now, and it's just been great to be able to come back to, uh, to Bryan. And I look forward to welcoming all the, the new students who are gonna be coming to Bryan Hill uh, in just a few short months. Awesome, thank you for being here. I'm really excited to kind of pick your brain, to see, tell me a little bit, you said you were a student at Bryan. What was that like? Did you have a mullet? I did not have a mullet, <laughs> and I have the pictures to prove it. Uh, beautiful. Yes. Can you tell me, maybe apart from your hairstyle, what is something you remember about your experience at Bryan? What kind of words it kind of characterized your experience at Bryan? You know, I think any college campus, but Bryan perhaps in particular, uh, for me is the word community, uh, the community of students, uh, the community of faculty, of staff, of coaches uh, that came around me to help me grow as a, as a young man, uh, as someone who was learning how to study, as someone was, who was learning how to be uh, a Christ follower, who was learning how to survive and thrive in the world that I was about to enter. Uh, those community of friends, those community of coaches, uh, of faculty who invested in me uh, probably was, that's the word that comes to mind is, is that community. Um, if you have had an experience uh, in the early 90s and then also being able to revisit campus, what would you say it's like to be a, a Bryan student now? In the year, the fall of 2020, what do you think it will be like to be a student at Bryan? You know, there's a lot of, a lot of similarities to when uh, I was a student, but then also when others you know, we have a number of staff who were students here through the late 90s and into the 2000s. Very similar, I think that word community stands out for, for a lot of folks. It is different uh, because the people are different. The students are different. Every year there's a, a new group of students who come in uh, and they add so much life and energy uh, and vitality to the campus. And so every year in one sense it's the same, but it's also quite different. Uh, but the culture here remains uh, in some ways, uh, very similar to when I was here. Faculty uh, still seek to invest their lives in every one of the students that come through, uh, come through this campus. Uh, spending time with them not only in the classroom, but outside the classroom, inviting them into their homes. Our coaches do the same thing, investing their lives, not only to help them play their sport better, but then also to be a better person. So people change, come and go, uh, but those commitments to serving and coming alongside every one of our students, uh, that hasn't changed. And, and I, it's been great to come back into that environment to see that. Awesome. That's so neat to hear uh, throughout the, the times that there is something special that God is doing on campus. Yes. And to hear that reflected in your experience is really neat. Yes. So sort of going off of those experiences, what do you think makes the community at Bryan different um, from other universities, other college campuses that made you want to come back to be uh, a part of, of the life here? You know, fundamentally, I think it is our motto, Christ above all. Um, at Bryan, we're not just about preparing whoever comes here uh, for that job. 
we are going to give you great job preparation. You're going to get a great uh, academic experience. You're going to get a great community life experience here on this campus. But it's going to be about something even more than that, and that is understanding what it means to serve God and to serve your fellow man. Um, and, and so that Christ above all, uh, that's a, a constant that's been a part of this campus since 1930, 90 years ago. Uh, and that's just such a tremendous legacy to be a part of. Um, we're going to prepare students for life, uh, not just that, that initial job or those series of jobs. It's really about life preparation here. In addition to those things, all of the things that Dr. Mann has been able to talk to us about, I hope will be even more expounded upon by some of our faculty um, in our next segment. Thank you so much for joining us. Catch you soon. After having the opportunity to talk to Dr. Mann a little bit more about what it's like to be a student at Bryan, I would love for us to get to jump into how our faculty feels about um, teaching, loving, being a part of life at Bryan as well. So uh, let's get to meet a couple of our professors. Feel free, introduce yourself. Let us know, who are you? My name is Michael Palmer. I teach in the communication department. Hey there, I'm Dr. Daniel Gleason and I teach in the English department and this is my seventh year here at Bryan as a faculty member and I was also a student here in the early 2000s. Do you have anything to add, Mr. Palmer? <laughs> After his well, longer introduction, any taglines? How long have you been here? I've been here for 20 years. Um, so seen some shifts and changes through life as usual, the, the epic fire and then the rebuild. Um, Can you tell me why you individually love being a professor at Bryan? Um, maybe even giving a little bit more background to some of the history here at Bryan. Well, I, I grew up overseas. I grew up in Southern Africa and uh, with some English roots, which was part of the propelling into um, the zone of care about mm -hmm. communication and meaningful exchanges. Um, the uh, Then coming to the States, studying and falling more and more in love with communication as a discipline. The uh, being a Brian occasions working on that as a discipline, but also the craft of teaching, which I absolutely love. Um, not just the machinery of it, which it has a technical side, but just the craft and the relational side. For me, uh, teaching students at Brian College is a delight because I have um, a teaching experience before Brian to compare it to. Um, and so I taught high school uh, for eight years. And although I enjoyed my time as a high school English teacher and learned a lot, shifting into college instruction uh, has just been a, a real gift for me to see highly motivated um, students who are um, kind of taking ownership of their own education um, and who are diving into content. Um, that, uh, for me, is a, a great benefit of working at Bryan. If you could characterize teaching at Bryan or even the faculty at Bryan in three words, what would they be? Hmm. I think one of my words uh, for, for the Bryan faculty is dedicated. Um, as a small school, uh, our faculty um, have to wear a lot of hats, and they also have a lot of um, different talents that they bring uh, to the workplace every day. And so the dedication that I see um, from various faculty uh, really is motivating. Some possibilities include these. One is I do get from uh, peers the sense of curiosity. There's just this um, insatiable curiosity. And so there's a lot of mixing um, of ideas because people are looking and reading and thinking and traveling. And so there's a lot of gleaning from each other because the people who you work with are incurably curious. The companion to that for me is there's also just a high embedded level of being devout. There's a flawed human beings trying to figure out how to live the complexities of faith in grounded ways. And then the other thing is just ambition. I do think one of the earmarks of caring for somebody else, whether it's uh, in a classroom or a peer or a colleague, is that you're ambitious for each other or for the other person. I think all of those things are very comforting to me to not hear, oh, the faculty at Bryan are perfect and the faculty at Bryan are scary. Uh, to hear words that are authentic, to hear about the desire for growth, not only among the students, but within yourselves, uh, and that matters a lot. So 
You have told us that you have watched students grow from babies to um, a, babies with graduation caps on, essentially. Uh, what would you say, what would it be a piece of advice to freshmen or transfers, new students at Bryan, uh, one piece of advice about how to learn at Bryan College? Well, it's a huge culture shock for some students to go from being in high school to college. They're in a whole new world. They have all of these new freedoms and responsibilities. Um, and so it's a time of extreme change and students find their identity as a part of that change. And so one thing that I would um, give as advice to freshmen is don't be afraid to try new things. Uh, don't be afraid uh, to take a course that interests you um, just because it interests you. Find a good minor. Um, being a, a small liberal arts college, you have the opportunity um, to sample widely. Um, and Brian is about educating the whole person. And so when you're at Brian or wherever you go to college, finding a way to have a, uh, an enriching experience that leads you down trails that you wouldn't be able to take. Otherwise, it's a unique time uh, in your life uh, as a student. For me, I mean, it's, it's a huge chapter, when you, especially if you're leaving home, if you're not transferring, because then you've been out a little bit already. But if you're coming into college as a true freshman, especially. But either way, it's definitely a new chapter. <clears throat> um, I do think that college is a lot of different things. It's a very textured experience. And Brian does occasion the on-campus experience, the possibilities of online, but then also travel with internships and overseas studies, etc. But in the overall, two things that do happen. One is that college is an academic experience because you come to study and then to get that little thing at the end that says I have this degree, this credential, this credential which will open doors, hopefully. So definitely an academic experience. <clears throat> uh, so what you major in, maybe major and minor, is critical. But then the companion to that is socialization. That is, uh, it's the place where you do get to experience some independence, independent thinking, decision making, but friendships. And then with that, travel, mission trips, um, pranking. You can't, you should not be able, to, be able to leave college without being experienced at healthy pranking, not unhealthy pranking. Um, but, but you do, and, and sometimes you forge the friendships that you have for the rest of your life um, in this one unique three, four, five year chapter. So, I think a lot of students gain that specifically from enriching experiences with their professors. So um, my piece of advice is to have a cup of tea with Mr. Palmer. First day, last day on campus, every day on campus, please do that. Thank you guys so much for being a part of our experience and getting to acquaint students a little bit more with life on campus. Um, next, we're gonna get a little bit more involved with on-campus life and jump into the dorms. So since we just got a chance to talk to some of our faculty, I would love to get a chance to talk a little bit more about the people who live uh, in our dorms that help our students. So uh, introducing some of our resident directors. Please feel free to introduce yourselves. Yeah, my name is Steven Ricketts. I'm the resident director in Long. And I'm Casey Kalk, and I'm the resident director in Houston. Awesome. Thank you guys for being yeah. a part. Yeah. Um, Pumped. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. All righty. <laughs> I love it. Let's go. Let's, Let's go. go. <laughs> so what is your favorite part about being a resident director? Whoever wants to take it, go first. I mean, there's so much to it, but a really, really cool part, and I feel like maybe just the most rewarding part uh, for me is just getting to watch um, and be front row yeah. for students kind of going through some of the most formative years of their lives. Like, college is that. Yeah. Um, you learn so much about who you are and independence, and just there's so many things that are happening during college, and so to get a front row seat to watch them jump into new things, try new things, learn lessons, hard and good lessons and fun lessons. It's just really, really rewarding in that sense. We do live in the dorm, which is kind of crazy, but honestly, it's so much fun um, to get to do life with all these girls or guys. Um, it's just a good time. It's a weird job, but it's so much fun. Awesome. Yeah, I would say just going off of that, um, being able to have residents down um, into my apartment and host them and um, just do life with them, um, whether that's watching a ball game um, or actually uh, digging into scripture um, and discipleship. Um, it could be anything, but just having my door open and having um, both my RAs and then other students um, just come down and enjoy life together, that's, that's awesome. awesome. So you're describing a lot of these things that you're getting to do with your dorm, with your students. 
How would you describe a dorm life at Bryan College? I think um, depending on where the student's living, it's going to be different. Um, life in Long is very different from life in Woodley. Um, but I think in general, um, the, the students that you're living around, um, they're going to be your best friends. Um, they're the ones that care about you. They're the ones you're going to run to when, when you're going through something difficult. And so I think no matter where you're at on campus, um, you're always going to be surrounded by people who really genuinely care about you. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really the most important part of dorm life is having um, that community. Yeah, so. absolutely. A big part of our vision as student life is to cultivate belonging. And so that's our priority in each dorm, even though they are unique and you kind of get a unique living situation wherever you go, um, our heart behind it is to give students an opportunity to find those best friends and to find an opportunity to feel like they belong a part of something mm -hmm. um, bigger than themselves, even bigger than their friends, but even just a part of this Bryan community. Um, that is our heart, that is our goal, and so we do everything from fun to spiritual to intentional to um, trying to even give organic opportunities for students to just hang out in the hallway. Um, we encourage our RAs to do that a lot when I mean, you do see that of like people just sitting outside their doors in the hall at 11 o'clock at night either doing homework or just having conversation and so um, we do everything we can to give them the opportunity to find community. So Awesome. Yeah. So specifically, you were talking about things that are fun, things that are spiritual. Can you give me some examples of on-campus events? Uh, that what, what does it look like to be at an event on, on campus? Campus events, our department puts on campus events, and we also do dorm events. So each individual dorm will do um, their own. They're all a blast. They're all super fun. Um, so you can talk about campus events. Yeah, so to. I think probably one from general consensus of the Res Life staff, mm -hmm. our luau that we did during mm -hmm. Welcome Week mm -hmm. was a big hit. Um, we had um, everyone out uh, to the volleyball courts over by Long, and we had um, volleyball and cornhole and spike ball, and uh, we did snow cones. That was a big hit, yeah. as it was still 98 degrees <laughs> with 100% yeah. humidity. <laughs> um, and so that was one of our uh, exciting campus events that we had this last year. Um, and then another one that's kind of a res life favorite is our uh, funnel cake night that we do yeah. um, in September um, where we have everyone out in the quad and have funnel cakes. It's a great opportunity um, for our RAs to serve um, as well as us. Um, and but who then, doesn't like funnel cakes? Exactly, Come exactly. <laughs> so um, yeah, also gives um, students a uh, chance to connect with each other. Mm -hmm. And you could just really see a sense of community from that. And then here in Houston, we've done a few um, fun events like Taco Tuesday, just those kinds of things. But we also did a spiritual emphasis week called Love Your Sister. And our whole vision for that was the idea of loving someone above yourself and taking a week to intentionally do just a few simple challenges to get the girls to realize just doing a few simple things can really change the habits that you set for yourself. And so each day of the week was a different challenge where they had to either write an encouraging note. We covered all the mirrors in Houston with paper and they could write an encouragement of like, hey, sometimes you look in the mirror um, and you don't give yourself good self-talk. So rather than doing that, go to a mirror and write something that you wish you could say to yourself or wish you could say to someone else as a source of encouragement. So just little things like that. Give a prayer, um, leave a prayer request, take a prayer request, different things like that. And then I know Long, um, you guys have done some like hanging out in your apartment. He's done an awesome job of being hospitable and always, and I know Josh and Woodley has done the same thing of just hosting video games, watching games, doing a chip and dip night, like all those kinds of, who doesn't love food? Right. Always got to revolve your At least for the guy's food. side. That's <laughs> Girls too. The big for pull. sure. The big pull. <laughs> food doesn't always win. Queso yeah. specifically, in Let's my go. opinion. But so I'd like to announce I'm moving back in the dorm. So well, I'm coming. Go. I'm coming Houston, back. Right? Houston. Yeah. <laughs> but specifically for those who are looking to move into the dorms for new freshmen, for prospective students, for new transfers who are wanting to come in and be a part of student life at Bryan, what's one thing that you would say, one piece of advice that you would give them? I would probably say um, don't be afraid to be made uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. um, I think we see a lot of hesitancy with students um, and I mean I see it in myself too. It's really hard to step outside of your comfort zone um, but as I even mentioned earlier college or like being in college are some of the most formative years of your life and so you've got to choose to make yourself uncomfortable and I can promise you that you will see exponential growth because um, it's when we step outside of our own comfort zone that we really step into the arms of God mm -hmm. um, and knowing that he 
is there, he is with us, um, and that he is teaching us and he is forming us more into the women and men of Christ that he's created us to be. And so um, that's what I tell my girls all the time is like, hey, like I know it's hard, but don't be afraid to be made uncomfortable. You're not going to crash and burn. It's not going to be the end of the world. You're going to be able to learn something from those tougher, uncomfortable moments. Um, So choose them. I know that's weird, but choose to be uncomfortable, and I promise you'll get the most out of your college experience. Yeah, I would encourage them um, to invest in those around them, um, to love others well, um, and to be faithful. I know God really desires to do big things through the lives of our students, Mm -hmm. Um, and so to be faithful to that calling. Yeah. I think it is a know. lot of it is what you put into it, yeah. and you get out what you what you give, yeah. and and that is so very evident in yes. Sarah's yeah. life. Yep, awesome. the opportunities are there. The opportunities are there for community. The opportunities are there for belonging. You just have to choose them. So they're there. I hope they choose them, and I hope we get to know all of you <laughs> better and all that fun yeah. stuff. <laughs> Come on to Brian. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you guys so much for your time. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, very soon we're going to also be able to jump in to get to know even more of the loving staff um, and faculty uh, here at Bryan, specifically within our coaching staff. Um, So let's see what it's like to be a student athlete at Bryan. I wouldn't know. All right, after getting a chance to jump into life in the dorms, I would love for us to see what it's like to be a student athlete. Uh, We have a couple representatives from our athletic department who I would like for them to introduce themselves. I am Mike Keene. I am the athletic director here at the college. And I am David Kalk. I'm an assistant women's basketball coach. Awesome. Thank you guys for being here. So what would you say stands out about Bryan Athletics? Um, I think one of the main things that stands out with our athletics is the sense of family. Um, It's not just a team. The coaches actually care about their student athletes. I think that's what makes us special. Yeah, I can speak specifically to women's basketball. We talk about things like be a good teammate. We have a big motto called we over me. Um, And stuff like that just kind of culminates who we are as a as a program and as an athletic department, just putting family first, being unselfish, um, putting the goods of other people before yourself. So that's just huge in our athletic department and our program specifically. That's neat. That's good to hear. And they do such a great job at that. (laughs) Awesome. They really do. (laughs) And I think that is noticeable from campus as well. Could you tell me a little bit about how you encourage your athletes to balance life between athletics, which takes up a lot of time and effort, and classes, and also the rest of campus life? I think the crazy thing about athletics specifically is a lot of these kids that come in have been doing that in high school already. Right. um, Because they're forced, they're doing a lot of things, they're doing their schoolwork, they're doing AAU, travel ball, high school seasons, and stuff like that. So when athletes come in, they've already kind of built a lot of that up. Um, so they're usually able um, more times than not to be able to just come right into their programs, come right in their teams and establish that already. Um, but we'll do different things like kind of just different accountability tools as well if they need it. But a lot of that stuff is built before they come into a program specifically. And, and student athletes are, are a special group. They're expected to work twice as hard as anybody else because we, as we all, all the different programs, the different coaches, teach them, athletics comes after academics. Their academics are first. If they're not doing well in the classroom, they're no good to us because we have certain standards that they must uh, abide by and reach to play athletics. And it really is hard. Um, the, I think the uh, professors in the classroom are understanding that and, and trying to help us build that community. Uh, but we're We've got several options available to them for academic success, for tutoring and that sort of thing. And, and then every coach understands that too, that academics comes first. And try to encourage them every day. We come alongside them, we ask them constantly. I know there's, there's rarely a day goes by that they don't talk to students about how are you doing in the classroom. You know, so it's hard for them. Right. And I'm sure that there are a lot of different aspects to a a multifaceted athlete, uh, student, friend, sister, brother that adds a lot of weight. So thank you guys for 
being that mediator for our students. And part of that accountability comes from, like we talked about earlier, that family atmosphere. Like they're keeping each other accountable. They're holding each other accountable. So it's not even less off of our shoulders as coaches where they're studying with each other on road trips or in the hotel room. They're keeping each other accountable. Hey, have you turned this in? Have you, how are you doing studying for this test? And they're, they're holding each other accountable, which is really cool to see too. It's neat to see you guys facilitate that so well. Also. That might be the most important part of, mm -hmm. the, of yeah. the process is them holding each other uh, accountable. So along with that, the, the things that you guys are doing already, what, what is your favorite part about being a coach at Bryan? I would say my favorite part is being at a place that values competing at a high level and striving for excellence in everything they do, um, but being able to, on top of that, facilitate spiritual growth and individual growth, personal growth as well. Um, I think that the basketball stuff is fun. Like as a coach, obviously, we get involved with a certain game or a certain um, sport because we love the sport itself, but then you get to combine that with, hey, how are you doing with your spiritual life? Or how, how am I gonna walk with you through the battles outside of basketball? Because it's, it's not just about the sport specifically. If coaching was all about the sports itself, it'd be easy, anybody could do it. Um, but it's the aspects of everything outside of that, that like, hey, how are, how's, how's the classroom going? How are things going in the classroom? How are things going um, in your walk with Christ? Uh, what kind of stuff have you been dealing with this week, the past day even? Um, so being able to walk with them through that process has been my favorite part as a coach. And that makes me happy to hear one of our coaches making statements like that, <clears throat> because it really is true. For me, uh, the most important thing is being able to build into their lives spiritually. We talked about academics being ahead of athletics. Well, so is the spiritual aspect too. That's why we're here. That's our college's mission is to help. And, and we I've, I actually coach a fishing team here also. And I've told every single prospect and their parents that's ever came to me three things. Uh, number one, we're a college. Your child is coming here to get an, ath a, a, an academic uh, graduation. You know, they're coming here to get a, a degree. That's most important. Uh, secondly, we're a Christian college, not just in name only, mm -hmm. but we really believe that. Down our sleeve on our jerseys, it says Christ above all, and we actually believe that. And then number three, we want to have some fun on the water. And it always amazes me whether it's our women's basketball program or the fishing team or whoever it is, how successful we can be. And I believe it's because the Lord's just blessing us for having the right things in the right order. You know, He's, he's blessed us for, for uh, serving Him and, and doing the right thing. Yeah, that culture outside of the sport can affect how you do on the, floor, oh, on the court. It's crazy how that works out too. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for letting me in on a lot of the athletic world. Um, also, we're gonna have a quick two-on-one tournament. It's you guys against me. Is, well, is, that, is that okay? I'm out, I'm afraid. Uh. I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, thank you guys so much. And hope, hopefully you have enjoyed getting the opportunity to meet a little bit of our athletic staff. Um, so in addition to that, we're gonna go ahead and jump on over to uh, how student leaders affect our campus, um, just like our student athletes. Awesome. It has been such a privilege to get to know quite a few different people on campus. Um, I'm really excited to get to know some people who have trained me and also have trained lots of other student leaders. So uh, please feel free to introduce yourselves, student leader leaders. Yeah. Hey, hi, I am uh, Tim Shetter. I am the Assistant Dean of Students here at Bryan College and I oversee a variety of different activities, events, programs, and so it's been a great time. Been here for 20 years, graduated as an alum, and uh, this is fantastic. Awesome. Uh, yeah, and I'm Jack Saunders, uh, also an alum, been on staff here. This is my fifth year, and I'm the Director of Leadership and Culture, so I have the opportunity to work with students kind of all across the board, helping them uh, develop a leadership path for their time here at Bryan. Awesome. So, 
talking a little bit about the things that you're already responsible for, can you tell me about some ways for students to get involved in uh, opportunities here at Bryan? Get, just kind of give some examples of ways to be student leaders at Bryan. Yeah, Bryan has a long history of uh, investing in students and developing them as young men and women to be leaders who uh, follow along with our mission statement of making a difference. And so uh, we have a number of different programs stretching from residence life, uh, resident assistants who really cultivate a sense of community on our campus to uh, students who are out in our local community here in Dayton who are the hands and feet of Jesus for so many different ministries from uh, tutoring young men and women at the library to uh, helping people with disabilities, um, students who are part of the Worldview Fellows who travel across uh, our region to schools and churches and, and homeschool communities talking about the intersect of faith and culture, how to follow Jesus in today's culture. Um, there are several uh, other opportunities. Tim, you want to share? Sure. Another one would be Student Government Association. Yeah. That's one that we have. Uh, that's an elected position. Um, and they represent the student body. Uh, right now they're doing a good job of doing a lot of communication with students and trying to uh, send out surveys and just try to find feedback from any information that they can to see what students want, what they need, and those kind of things. Uh, also we have what we call a student events council and so they plan a lot of our different events and activities that we have on campus. Awesome. It sounds like a lot of the students you work with are probably already good leaders to a certain degree, but how do you foster that growth and, and even help them grow even more? Mm. That's a great question. Mm. It is a great question. <laughs> um, so I think we spend time developing them uh, through different classrooms, through uh, different meetings and sessions, one-on-one, -on -one, mm. um, giving them the responsibility. You know, a lot of it is saying, hey, here's how you do some things now go and do it mm -hmm. and so really some hands-on type learning um, that's really one of the best ways that i have found that someone can develop as a leader you got to be able to to make mistakes and learn from those but also have some really good successes and learn from those as well and mm -hmm. so both are very very good yeah I, I think you're hitting the nail on the head with uh kind of the model at brian really emphasizes both kind of a cohort where you're part of a team of some sort uh, in almost all of the different leadership programs we have here at Bryan, you're, you're really a part of a unique team. And then uh, different staff people and, and faculty who direct those programs give a lot of one-on-one -on -one attention to students. And so I, if I were to kind of like uh, flesh out what it typically looks like for an average student is, I do and you watch, um, mm -hmm. I do and you help, and we begin to kind of turn uh, to mm -hmm. you do and I help, uh, to you do and I watch, because we want to see students really, you know, uh, over the course of four years, become people who are confident in using their gifts and talents for the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So it sounds like also, in addition to these things, you guys are good at what you do, that you like doing what you do. Um, that's an assumption. <laughs> I'm going to go with it. <laughs> what? Um, what is your favorite part about um, being someone who works with student leaders on campus here at Bryan? Mm. Mm. I love the uh, aha moments mm. with students. Mm -hmm. um, you yes. know, becoming a great leader is, is uh, a long process and mm -hmm. it requires uh, embracing uh, both the success that comes along with being a leader as well as the failure at, at times. And, and to mm -hmm. walk students through a process where something clicks and they begin to realize uh, the invitation of God to trust them in a deeper way or to uh, to be confident in who they are in Christ, um, to overcome both uh, personal and interpersonal um, challenges. Man, that's so beautiful. Uh, it's, it's probably one of my favorite things is just seeing the lights kind of come on for students during their time here at Bryan and, and really s see them beginning to thrive uh, in their leadership role. Mm -hmm. Apart from working with me as a student leader, Tim, what is your yes. favorite part about working with <laughs> yes. student leaders? You were one of my favorite parts of that's, people yeah. to work with. And hey, so, tell that's from your that. heart. You know, hey, that's right. It's so that. from my heart, right? It was so <laughs> deeply from my heart. Um, honestly, that was the first thing that came to mind was the aha moments. Hmm. But, uh, and so everything Jack said, I, I echo. But I would also say it's just that development of that person. Hmm. Um, and sometimes some of the favorite parts is finding the diamond in a rough. Mm. 
Mm. Right? There are some people that you think, hey, there's no way that they're going to be a leader. And somebody sees something in them and you go, let's see what we can find here. Mm. And the, so it's the person that didn't know that they were a leader who needed just that extra encouragement, that extra moment, or that extra person to come alongside them and kind of walk them through. And then, um, honestly, the other thing that's really awesome is to see after they graduate what they go on to do um, mm -hmm. and the development that they continue with and how they've gotten that foundation from us here or from their family as well. Um, mm -hmm. And so, and just that they continue to build upon that and they continue to succeed um, and live life glorifying God in all that they do, which mm -hmm. I think is fantastic. Awesome. If you guys were to give a piece of advice for prospective students wanting to be a student leader at Bryan, what would you say? Mm. You know, one of the things that I tend to emphasize a lot with students is um, to really focus on who you're becoming over what you're accomplishing. You know, mm -hmm. I think about mm -hmm. when I was a senior in high school, my mindset going into college was, how can I beef up my volunteer hours or community service hours? How can I make myself look um, really, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Viable as mm -hmm. a leader, successful, mm -hmm. someone who's got a long list of achievements. And, and in the process, you can really begin to lose sight of, of the, the more eternal aspects of your character and your attitude, your, your uh, personality. And, and so when I think about giving advice to students, I, I just emphasize, man, focus on who you're becoming, mm -hmm. especially as a, as a Christian. It's, I think, really important that students give time and attention to um, the kind of person they want to be in five or ten years from now because... Mm -hmm those kinds of uh, decisions are going to are going to influence the type of leader they, they are here on our campus but also what kind of uh, person they're going to be after their time at Bryan as a as a husband or a wife as a mother or father as a co-worker as as someone who creates their own industry like we we want to see students do their uh, work really well with a level of integrity uh, that really glorifies God mm -hmm. I would say don't be scared to fail yeah right take chances try new things right that's going to help you develop as a person yeah and also kind of know who you are um that's probably my biggest advice you know learn from those failures but also learn from those successes that you have along the way with them mm. thank you guys so much for being here and being able to share your heart for students on brian's campus and abroad um, it's been a privilege so Again, thank you for being here, and I hope you love, loved hearing from them as much as I did. Uh, this has been a fun time. I hope you guys have enjoyed getting to understand a little bit more of what it's like to be a student at Bryan. This is life at BC. Whenever it becomes safer to leave home and come visit us, we would love for you to do that. If you have any follow-up questions, any particular person that you were able to meet, one of the professors, administrators, or coaches that you want to connect with, feel free to text the word READY to 52855. Hope to see you soon.